director of the Urban the, of the Poverty Eradication Fund and the investigative officer of the fund with us. We are going to have Mr. Pollard to come first. I think in both instances we are um, interested in the same areas of query uh, from the front perspective of the issue. That is, poverty alleviation determined that it would allocate X amount of monies to both rural and urban. And um, our concerns would be what became of the use of those funds as far as the poverty alleviation fund is concerned, poverty eradication fund is concerned. How would it have been determined as to the volume of funds that have been allocated in, in, in each um, instance? whether or not there was any kind of follow-up from the poverty eradication perspective once funds were allocated to either of these two entities, was there any kind of follow-up that would have satisfied the, the fund that the monies were in fact used, used for the purposes slated and properly accounted for? I think generally that is where we are. We look at the queries raised in the Auditor General's report. Yes, could you bring Mr. Pollard? Good afternoon, um, Mr. Pollard. Thank you for coming. Good we will try to use the time very efficiently and not detain you beyond the measure um, that already we have done so um, over Julie. Um, the members of the committee before whom you come today are Minister Cummins on my right, Ministers Jordan, and Minister Sandra Husband on my left. And we have online um, Dr. Sonia Brown and Minister Cattle, all members of the Public Accounts Committee. We also have representation from the Office of the Auditor um, General. We have to start by letting you make an affirmation as to the testimony, the evidence you should give or swearing an oath. Mr. Pollard, could you please stand? Raise the Bible in the right hand and repeat the oath of witness, please. Before you. evidence that I shall give before the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pollard. Mr. Pollard. Members, uh, Mr. Poller is available to us. Anybody wants to go first? I have a question to you, um, Mr. Pollard. You, you're, you have access right now to the report of the Auditor General. You have that with you. I'm on page um, 56 at 4.30 and 4.30 and 4.31. Now, I look at 4.31, and it says that the, the audit findings of which are captured in the report that you have, the 
audit was requested by the permanent secretary, Ministry of People Empowerment and Affairs in the ministry, based on concerns about the seeming lack of criteria for approving the assistance and the type of assistance being provided. How would you respond to that? Permanent well, Secretary of the Ministry is requesting, is suggesting, recommending that this audit, or had recommended that this audit be carried out because he had, or she had, some serious concerns as to the seeming lack of criteria for approving assistance and the type of assistance which is being provided. Um, <clears throat> All right, thanks, dear. Before you answer that, and I forgot, thank you, um, Deputy Clerk. Just read into the record, say for us um, your name officially and the position that you hold, your length of service there, before and, you respond. All right, Andrew Pollard, um, Coordinator, Poverty Alleviation and Reduction Program. And you've been there? Ministry of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs. And you've been there forever? No. Um, and, and I think that's a good place to start here. Uh, I agree with the statement here. But you were being there for how long? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, from September the 23rd, 2019. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So starting from that point, um, I agree the permanent secretary was new and i agree with her perspective but as i um reflected just now um i was not a part of the organization for the period under review and as i said i share the permanent secretary's view why do you say you share the view what makes you um, share the view that there ought to be concerns and that there ought to be an, uh, that there ought to be ought to be this type of audit yeah well I was working in the ministry and in the particular um, department so I think I should clarify here a bit that the department under in which I was working was called um, as they said part the Poverty Alleviation and Reduction Program. Now, that particular department had two arms to it, the Poverty Eradication Fund, which is what the report uh, has addressed, and the IC Bridge Program. I was project coordinator for, well, I started out as um, project consultant for the IC Bridge Program, and then I became project coordinator, project uh, officer for the IC Bridge Program. Um, the IC Bridge Program is a poverty reduction program, well, was a poverty reduction program, but it was not associated with the poverty eradication but, fund, but, so but to speak. But out of your, coming out of your experience since, uh, thus, thus far since 2019, mm -hmm. yeah, and what perhaps you may have notice through reference to files of operations that preceded you what would be your concerns based on your experience to date from 2019 and what you would know in terms of any reference to information in any files prior to your time that you would have seen why, why would there be a concern that there ought to be an audit or audits well, it, it wasn't necessarily a reference to files. The mayor was working in the same um, space. And um, you would have heard from time to time how persons were getting assistance and that sort of thing. So that's why um, I share the view. So there's no particular concern of yours not necessarily. As to, as to the systems and the, the way things are managed, accounted for, that would suggest we, we need to have this type of audit from time to time? Well, well, sir, I wasn't privy to how the particular department was being run. Uh, when I say I wasn't privy, though, it was a mere cursory understanding in terms of how the department was, was being run. You would have heard, working in the same space, as you said, you would have heard 
things from time to time. Heard people talking that sort of sort of thing. Can you speak page sixty of the report? Page sixty of the report. Fourth point three eight. Paragraph, a section that speaks to doubtful disbursements from the fund, notwithstanding the limitation in determining the appropriateness for disbursements from the fund, there were disbursements which seem not to readily fit the description of alleviation of poverty. These included disbursements for mortgage arrears, a marriage seminar, a sponsorship of shows, Criteria used to approve these disbursements was not provided. A previous coordinator of the fund was of the opinion that assistance for mortgages was not part of the mandate of the fund. Can you speak to that in any wise? Um, sir, I, I am not able to speak to that. Like I said, I, I didn't have that intimate knowledge of the fund, um, of the, the poverty eradication fund. So. I unfortunately can't. And you have no speak access to, to you had no access to any of their files. No, I did that. And so far as you're aware right now, the way the, the eradication fund operates. Now you are there. Since twenty nineteen, and so far as you're aware, um, you don't see instances of projects which might be considered inappropriate in relation to the mandate of the fund? No, sir, because the fund has been uh, put in abeyance um, by PS. Once she came and found and had um, challenges with how um, persons were accessing the fund. The fund has been put in abeyance? What yeah. do you mean by that? Well, the, that part of the of part, the Poverty Elevation Reduction Program has not been operational since 2019. And that's because, you said that's because? Oh, right, so that's because the um, permanent secretary halted the operations. Who is the permanent secretary? Uh, Ms. Gabrielle Springer. Gabrielle Springer? Yes. So as far as you are aware, Ms. Permanent Secretary Springer put a halt to the operations of the fund? Yes, sir. Because, because, oh, because um, as we saw here at the, the first reference we made, um, the request for the audit on page 57, mm. um, based on her concerns about the seeming lack of criteria for approving the assistance and the type of assistance being provided. Do you know how long, yeah, Miss, it's Miss, is it Miss Gabrielle Springer? Yes. You know how long P.S. Gabrielle Springer would have been at the ministry? Um, she came in 2018. You know who's the permanent secretary before that? Would you know? Yeah, the before that it was um, I think Miss Erne Ernesta Drex. Miss Ernesta. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, I think it was Ernesta Drex before Drex? that. Yes. You're sure? I am not sure. <laughs> So what do you do? Uh, you, you, no funds being dispensed by you guys. What, what, did, what do you guys do? All right, so as coordinator now, I am responsible for regional and international um, collaboration with the international organizations. But uh, I'm also responsible for social protection uh, within the ministry. So anything to do with social protection 
that's my area of function. What do you mean by social protection? So social protection is what we would call in the past, uh, well, well, we think we still call it, talk about it now, um, social services, the delivery of social services. So, um, but that has, that is more or less um, looking at contributory, what we call contrib non-contributory social services. Social protection involves a whole lot more, but it is still looking at providing assistance to persons um, who are v poor and vulnerable persons. Uh, really and truly, social protection is for everyone though. So, so I said, I thought about non-contributory, uh, but there's also a contributory which is looking at uh, NAS and such like. Two things, you, you said you're responsible for regional and international Co cooperation, Co cooperation. And collaboration. What do you mean by yeah. that? With development partners. So at this point in time, we are in, we're coming to the end of uh, what we call the UN SDG Fund Joint Program. And that's a program with um, the five, five UN agencies working collaboratively, looking at the a review of the social protection system in Barbados. So and does, that mon is coming does to money come? Does money come to the fund from these sources? Um, no, no. This this is a four point eight million dollar um, program, but. But that is mostly in terms of technical assistance. Okay. How do you relate to the poverty alleviation fund that operates out of the Prime Minister's office? If that's the right designation. Um, you are talking about under Mr. Lane? Yes. Right. Well, basically, as we do with most other social service agencies, um, they make referrals to us. Um, but basically, that's that's more or less. What so happens. when they make referrals to you, what happens? Well, we have to pass it on. Pass uh, on the referral to whom? To the welfare department or the national assistance board or um, the um, national disabilities unit. So why is it coming to you then if you have to pass it on to all these other agencies? Um, sometimes I'm not sure, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Minister Kelly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. I, I just have a question. It's at page 65. You said that the fund is in abeyance, yes? Mm -hmm. So on that basis, given the fund is in abeyance on the basis of the recommendations that it needed to be put in abeyance by the Permanent Secretary, the recommendations from the Auditor General are captured on pages 65 through 66. Mm -hmm. And the first recommendation is that the Ministry determines the future role of the fund and governance taking into account the assistance provided by other government agencies. On the basis of the Chairman's last questions and your answers, has the Ministry done this assessment to determine the future role of the fund and how it should be governed and with what agencies in collaboration with the ministry. All right, thanks for that. Um, well, the, we, yes, we, we did look at the fund. Um, we have a report which has been submitted to our minister. And um, we, we, we have more or less like two options. One is to discontinue the fund or to see how best it can be incorporated. I should tell you, I don't think it's a secret, I should tell you that our ministry is currently, currently going through the process of a new, um, a, a new organization, uh, um, the rationalization of the social services, particularly the National Disabilities Unit, the National um, Assistance Board, the Welfare Department, and the Child Care Board. So, um, this is how we are trying to, to look at those recommendations and put them in place. Yeah? Chair, I do have a follow-up question because um, as I look at the document provided to the, to the House by the previous uh, person who sat in the chair and I listened to the current uh, representative, you sir, thank you very much for being here. 
I, I do have a question. During the period under review in this audit, 2007 up to 2018, we have a number of persons who would have been referred to any of the agencies that are meant to be coordinating delivery of services. And these are the most vulnerable persons in our society. And I am troubled by the number of persons for whom houses were meant to be provided, repairs were meant to be done. And between 2009 and up to 2018, while monies were allocated and in some instances spent, we are certainly disbursed, we are not seeing any delivery of services. Would you be in a position to say to us, what is the follow-up now of the agency under the umbrella of your social protection uh, function in the ministry with those persons who would have been held in abeyance for the period 2009, 2007, I'm sorry, through 2018? Um, I'm not in a position, ma'am, to say what is the situation going forward, but um, I, I was listening to uh, when Mr. Armstrong was here, and I did hear him say that they will do an investigation with why persons did not get the houses, and they will be able to um, let us know. So, But Chairman, if I can just follow on, I'm not really asking about what's happening going forward. I am concerned that the documentation provided by uh, Mr. Campbell and also documented in the Auditor General's report suggests that there are a number of vulnerable persons for whom request were submitted for support, monies were disbursed, and no action has been taken. I'd like to get a sense of whether your department is in possession of any information since you came to office in 2019 on the status of the welfare of all of those persons who were outstanding. Um, no, the simple answer is no, ma'am. We are not in possession of any information in that regard. Anybody else? Yes, Minister Jordan. This is a, a very general question, um, and in some respects, it follows on from Minister Cummins' question. It is a concern that is voiced by people from time to time, those concerned with what appears to be situations around us in our communities that need addressing. And the general question to you, because the, the, the essence of the audit is suggesting that persons who have fallen through the cracks, let me put it that way, are not being tended to. So using a very rose hill term maybe. My, my question to you is, are you satisfied even in your short tenure? Um, I'm moving away from the the fund itself, because I think you indicated that you're the coordinator for poverty alleviation um, and reduction of poverty, right? Reduction program. Reduction, sorry, program. poverty alleviation and reduction program. Right. Now, are you satisfied with how the system, the system that is set up, so you spoke about um, non-contributory. Mm -hmm. And from that, I understood you to be probably suggesting situations that are not addressed by other areas. For example, like national insurance, people yeah. contribute, get something. These are situations outside of that. Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied that those persons who fall in that category, their needs are being addressed in a human, humane, timely fashion? In, in your two years in, in, the, in the function, what you've seen, does it suggest to you that the distress of people is being addressed? If yes, fine. If not, what do you see being put in place? What are the plans being put in place to, to make sure that people will not fall through the cracks? All right, thanks for that. Um, 
the as as I guess with um, many things, um, there's always room for improvement, and and so it is with the um, persons who are vulnerable and how they are treated with. Now, I, I want to skip forward a little bit in terms of uh, of your question in terms of how do we see that being dealt with. And so I remember earlier I talked about the Department for Children and Family Services. That's what the amalgamated department is going to be called, right? And so that is, that is an effort to be able to address those persons who are, to better able to address those persons who are falling through the cracks. Prior to that though, remember I said that I was project um, officer for the IC Bridge program. So the IC Bridge program is a program um, which addresses needs, the needs of vulnerable persons and poor persons, but, but the family is the unit of intervention as opposed to the individual. So we're trying to capture the whole family there. Um, there. And, and, and so we have now the Strengthening Human and Social Development Program, which now is a, a derivative of the IC Bridge Program, and, and that is also having the same modality of intervention. Yeah? So um, the Strengthening Human and Social Development Program has 250 households that they deal with. So IC Bridge has 30. Now, strengthening human social development has 250, and so that again, and that 250 comprises about 1,500 persons of all ages. That again can, um, is indicative of how we are seeking to address the poverty and vulnerability um, in Barbados. And, and uh, as I said, I dare say, once the um, the amalgamated department comes on stream, um, it, it will, we will have a, a greater opportunity to address vulnerability and poverty. What we are doing right now though, is we are trying to make things easier for persons to access the services that are there. So for example, the welfare department, which takes the brunt of um, working with vulnerable persons um, persons have complained, they couldn't reach the welfare departments, and so on. So what we did is we devised a, an online form, Microsoft, in Microsoft forms where persons can now apply online. Um, yes, there are some kinks there, and so we're still seeking to work that out, but the opportunities are now greater for persons to present to the agency. Yeah? I hope that answers your question. Yeah, go ahead, Miss. I have a question on four three four five one on page sixty four. But go ahead, um, Minister. Uh, come in. Uh, Chairman, I actually was going there myself. That's what uh, I have I marked so to ask. You raised it earlier. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> I have it to ask. Um, we earlier I asked of the Auditor General about the functioning of the fund, and I want to draw your attention to page sixty four. Uh, paragraph 4.51. It says a review of accounting records showed that a consulting a consultant. Let me start from the beginning. A review of accounting records showed that a consultant was paid a total of two hundred and ninety-eight thousand one hundred and four dollars and eighty-four cents for work performed at different times during the period the twenty-second of January twenty thirteen through the thirty-first of May twenty eighteen. Some of these periods were continuous to the extent that the payments exceeded the $50,000 threshold for which a contract is required. No written contracts were provided for these periods. This is January 2013 through May 2018. Would you be in a position to shed any light on what you found when you joined the ministry on this particular matter? Well, what I found, ma'am, thanks, thanks for that. What I found is that, um, the well, well let me then let me then just say this that um as i said i was working in the department at, at this time right um 
I, I, I really can't speak to that, that's the honest truth. I can't speak to the whole issue of the contracts and, and so on. So, in the Auditor General's report, Chairman, if I can continue, at page 66, the last recommendation made by the Auditor General speaks to monies disbursed to the agencies for houses that were constructed, it should be recover recovered. It says the ministry investigates the reasons why the houses were not constructed and determine the way forward in assisting the intended beneficiaries. And it talks about the effective measures for governance on page 65. And these are things that go back to the original questions that I was asking and Minister Jordan. Has there been any effort that you have seen to be able to address these recommendations made in the Auditor General's report to treat to the serious allegations at page 64, paragraph 4.51, and then recommendations to treat to them on pages 65 and 66 at paragraph 4.55. Uh, no, ma'am, I can't say that there is, um, that we are actively pursuing these recommendations as you outline at this point in time. Is it possible then, um, is it possible then that in the report that you made earlier, that you, that you made reference to earlier, which has been submitted to your minister for approval, on the way forward that these things are addressed therein? Yes, ma'am, it's possible. That's correct. Is it a practice, Mr. Pollard, that when funds are disbursed from poverty alleviation to rural or to urban for projects which would have been sent to 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 y'all requesting funding? When when those funds are disbursed, is there any kind of follow up, follow through from poverty? alleviation to see what becomes of those projects, how they're going, whether or not they've been finished, what are, what are the final um, sums of money used, any, any kind of follow-up like that as far as you're aware? I, I, I am not uh, aware, sir, because as I said, um, I was not privy to the operations of are you the more, property. You're more the IC, IC bridge, uh, correct. Okay. correct. Minister Husbands, Minister Jordan, Minister Cattle, Dr. Brown, Minister... All right, well, let us thank you then um, for your time. Wish you well and be safe. Thank you very much. We have one more individual to come, our colleagues, and that's Miss. Miss Tanaway is, uh, she is the field investigator. And Pardon me? Miss Tanaway, who's coming next? Miss Tanaway. Yes, yes. Right. I, I would want to remain with her. Um, in terms of support. Why, why would you want that? Uh, well, Ms. Anuia is a, a junior officer, really. And how long has she been there? She's been there for the length of the... Uh, From? For the length of the program. Give, give, give us an approximate year? Um, I think 1990, 1990. So she'd be more exposed to the operations than you? Yes. So in a sense, you're her junior. <laughs> Members have a problem with him staying? Thank you very much. She can sit and get a chair. She was off the, I can move in the chair. Uh -huh. Okay. Maybe that's on a pace. Yeah. Oh, that's, he, he, he can move the microphone. Oh, he, he's gonna move the mic, yeah. Are you, are you going to hold her hands through the exercise? Uh, she <laughs> not at all. Not at all. It's just that there are not many chivalrous persons anymore. Good afternoon, Ms. Tanaway. Um, and she's field. Yeah, she's field investigative officer for the poverty. 
Thank you, Ms. Um, Hannaway, for coming before the Public Accounts Committee. Uh, share with us your knowledge as it relates to issues which we may want to raise with you coming out of the Audit General's Report of 2020. You have before you and who will interact with you, Minister Cummins on my right, Minister Colin Jordan on my left, Minister Husbands. Online, we have Minister Cattle and Dr. Sunny Brown, all members of the committee. We also have representation in Ms. Cassandra Hayward from the Office of the Auditor General. Mr. Pollard has asked to, to stay um, while you're here. You don't have any objection to that? No. All right. <laughs> Before we start, we have to have you do two things. You have to take an oath or make an affirmation, and then we want you to read your name into the record. Just recite your name and position and length of service at the poverty elevation so we can have that in the record. Good afternoon, Ms. Hanaway. Could you please stand? You're going to take the oath or you're going to do affirmation? The oath. Okay, could you raise the Bible in your right hand and read the oath of witness before you? The evidence that I shall give for the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help me go. Thank you, you may sit. Thank you. So just state your name and the position at the Poverty Elevation Eradication Fund. And if you have served anywhere else within the, the social welfare services of the government as it relates to this particular report, just, just let us know that. Okay. I'm Jacqueline Hanway, field investigator of the Ministry of People Empowerment and Affairs. I have been with the ministry since 1998. Okay. All right, my colleagues would have some questions for you. 94, 94 you said? 98. 1998. Yeah. What do you investigate? Pardon me? What do you investigate? What do I investigate? The um, person's social conditions, persons who request assistance, I investigate their conditions. So if, if we were faced with a situation where a request was made of the Poverty Eradication Fund for $60,000 to fix the house of person X. And you were faced with a situation where the original request, the original assessment suggests that the project should cost $40,000. Where, where would you come in terms of reconciling that? Where would your duties fall? What would happen? An what initial re just to be clear, initial request is made for forty thousand dollars mm -hmm. to fix the house of Miss Way. Mm -hmm. Later on, we find that it's seventy-five thousand dollars, not a fixed house, to rebuild the house. Mm -hmm. Where would your duties fall in that type of situation? Well, I would have already assessed the situation to find out sixty, just forty. But given that I don't have the technical expertise, the technical officer would then recognize that it would cost more than the 40, and they will in turn uh, relay that information to the ministry, and uh, we will seek to um, address the situation by asking for the additional funds. Your investigation would not therefore relate to the actual cost things? No. You, you're investigating the person's circumstances. circumstances? Yes, please. All right, my colleagues may ask some questions for you. We'll keep you too long, I hope. Ms. Minister Jordan? I have a question in relation to the timelines. There have been situations where, based on the evidence that we have received so far, mm -hmm. assessments were made, and then five years later, 10 years later, 15 years persons, later. Uh, 15 years later, um, some of these matters are not addressed. Your role as field investigator, once you have submitted to ministry. Do you have any role in following up with persons who you've already assessed to find out where they are, if assistance has been given, what are the, if there are any continuing challenges? Okay, we don't have a formal follow-up system, but yes, we would do some, maybe not on a large scale, but we would do some follow-up. In terms of, you said, five years down the line, Five, it could be as much as 15 years on the information that we've had. 
the assistance is supposed to be a one-off, one-off assistance. So, um, if I don't... Well, let me be a little bit more clear. Mm -hmm. the, some of the specifics in the Auditor General's report relate to houses. So this is, I'm, I'm referring, and I should probably be more specific, I'm referring to situations where a person is assessed as really needing assistance in replacing some gavne or some siding because you, the house is leaking, as the case may be. Um, what we've seen is that sometimes 10 years later, based on the records, mm -hmm. that issue has not been addressed. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is in that con within that context, is there, do you have a role, do you follow up once you've passed on to ministry, is there a role that you carry out in following up in, in those situations? Well, after it's passed on, you said to the ministry, after it's passed on to the ministry and approved, and then passed on to the very different commission, mm -hmm. they take it, pardon? They take it from there. My only role was to would follow up in between to find out how the family is doing, if the circumstances remain the same or, because there's not only housing, there are other situations in the household. So we also follow up to see what, how the circumstances are, if they're any better or if they've gotten worse. But in terms of the housing, that is with the Urban and Rural Development Commission. So in situations where you, well, let's ask a different question. Have you come across the situations that we have heard about where five, ten years later, what you've reported has not been addressed. Have you come across any of those and you're investigating? Yes, we have gone on visits with the auditor staff and we recognize that some of the houses weren't done. Were you able to come to that conclusion before going out with the, the staff of the audit office? Sometimes persons will call, because normally when we do an assessment and approval, we send letters to the clients to let them know what we have approved. So over a period of time and nothing has happened, some of the clients will call to let us know that the, the persons have visited, they've taken pictures, but nobody has come back as yet. So we would get that information coming back so we would know that they haven't started as yet. Final question, do you think the follow-up is rigorous enough to facilitate people who are really in need of state assistance? Are you satisfied that the follow-up has been rigorous enough? No, it's not, it hasn't been. Minister Husbands is next. Minister, can I ask you, um, Ms. Ms. Hannity, who's the head of the Poverty Eradication Bureau at this time, covered in the report? At 2007 to 2016, um, was Ms. Diana Haynes. Ms. Diana Haynes? Yeah, after 2016 to 19, 19 was Ms. Sonia Hamlin. Uh, just a second, Ms. Diana Haynes was there to 2016? Uh, yes, up to 2016. And after Ms. Haynes? Ms. Sonia Hamlin. Did you say Ms. Suzanne Hamlin? Sonia. Sonia Hamlin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sonia Hamlin. Post 260. Yes, Minister Husband. Thank you very much, Chair. Hi, good afternoon, yeah. I just want to take you back a little bit. You said that your current position is that of Chief Investigator? Field, field investigator. investigator. How many field investigators are there in your department? Um, during the period 2007 to nine, there were five of us. From 2010 to present, one. One. Yes, please. And that's you? That's me. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Could you just take us through 
um, when you're doing assessments mm -hmm. of cases, mm -hmm. what is it you are trained to look for? What, what is it you're required to assess and report on? Okay, if you will notice that the booklet would have an idea of what we look at. We look at the whole family situation, the family dynamics and whatnot, and the employment situation of the, the household and the um, income of the households. Okay. And based on, did you have thresholds that determined whether or not this person was a good candidate for assistance or did not qualify for assistance? We used, we used the IADB, at the time, we used the IADB report um, of the poverty line at $5,503 per annum per household. Sorry, how much? $5,503 okay. per household per annum. And that's Barbados dollars? Yes, or? please. So when you analyze the information, fill out your form and so on, you would then make a recommendation if something should be granted. And so you would do this assessment on a case-by-case -case basis? Yes, please. Okay. The, did you all also carry out assessments of proposals submitted by NGOs or community-based organizations? and so on for assistance? Uh, assessments are done on everybody who seek an assistance. No, I was asking like, if I had a community group mm -hmm. that was seeking to do something for the residents in my area, would the field investigator be the person who would do an assessment and make a recommendation as to whether or not it should be no, I, as the field investigator there, I work only with the individuals. Mm -hmm. The coordinator at the time, she did groups. Okay, so the coordinator was the person who would make assessments for other types of assistance. Yes. And that would include non-governmental organizations, community-based organizations, yes, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. The report says at 443, that a sample comprising 316 cases. Of those 316 cases, there were 122 cases for which no assessments were done. But obviously, a determination was made to issue assistance to these 122 cases. Are you aware of any conditions under which a field investigator would not have conducted an assessment and assistance was rendered? All, all persons have an, have an assessment done, all. Um, we might have had one case where uh, it was an ongoing case, which was a medical case, and we would just do an addendum to the assessment. But all assessments are done on everyone. Is that to your certain knowledge, or were there situations where you may not have been aware that a request was made and it was dealt with separately outside of field investigators? Could that happen? Yes, it could. The, in cases like that, to whom would those persons have gone to? Because if it is not the field investigator, mm -hmm. they're not calling back to you when they don't hear from you. Mm -hmm. There's somebody that they're communicating with. There's another structure in the office that mm -hmm. engages them. Do you know? what other structure they were engaging to get assistance. Okay, there were only two persons in the poverty eradication and reduction program, that was myself and the coordinator. If I am not there to do an assessment, the coordinator, she would do it herself. 
no, this is, you're speaking about now, that no. is only mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and the coordinator. Yes. But when there were five, mm -hmm. um, could it be that they were seen by other field investigators, or if they were not seen by the field investigators, is it then the coordinator who would have had to say something that would result in a person getting assistance? I'm trying to find out what is this alternative pathway? Well, they would be seen by the other, other field investigators, but if there's no one there, no, none of the investigators there which would be out in the field, the coordinator, coordinator. would do the and assess the person. Okay, and who were the coordinators over the past um, 10 years? You've been there a good while. The same, Miss Haynes and Miss Hamlin, same coordinators. Miss Haynes and Miss Hamlin? Mm -hmm. When, um, did, did you all do periodic reviews, you know? Like, when you have field investigators going out, you might on a monthly basis have a meeting, you share and discuss what you've seen in the field, if there was something you were uncertain about, you might raise it there. Did you all have those types of meetings? Yes, um, we would have a monthly meeting, but, um, if we have concerns while we are out in the field, we come back in and we have discussions with the coordinator to see how we could work through Was those issues. It? And during the times when you had meetings mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. did any of the coordinators or other personnel in the department ever raise cases that were not done by field investigators? Do you, do you know? Not to my knowledge. However, we would have had cases referred to us done by the welfare department, mm -hmm. but they would send them already prepared. Okay. So it's possible that some of these 122 cases might have been assessed by the welfare department. Would they not send? They would send the assessments form. Yes. Okay, so those should be in should the be. department. Yes, they should. Okay, thank you. Um, Were there times when you made assessments and in your judgment mm -hmm. or in the judgment of a field investigator, mm -hmm. this case was not, did not reach the threshold, mm -hmm. but in some mysterious manner it gets approved? <laughs> yes, there have been a few cases that I might not have recommended, but when uh, after it being reviewed, it was recommended. Um, how it was approved, sorry. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. How frequently would something like that happen? Um, it was not a, it was not a, often. It, it might have been time. a, couple of cases, but not, not on a regular basis. Not on a regular basis, no. and um, not often a couple of cases would be in relation to people you assessed, or all five of you? Each of you had maybe a couple that were reassessed differently. Yeah, all five. All, all five? five. Mm -hmm. okay. The, when assessments were done, and you had those long gaps between your saying this person should get assistance and the actual assistance being delivered. Mm -hmm. What were some of the issues that contributed to the length of time it took to respond? Um. length of time. Uh, we really didn't have a, a wide gap between cases uh, approved and and the disbursements of or the assistance given. How long a gap um, would you say it would take as soon as, 
as, so as soon as approval is given, as long as funds are available, funds are then dispersed and the assistance is given. But you would know of situations, it may not happen in every case, mm -hmm. but you would know of situations where there was a gap, where people called and said, well, look, somebody came and measured or they came and did X or Y, but I haven't heard anything since. Yes, there will be situations, and that would mainly uh, obtain with, in terms of housing, okay. not in terms of the um, other assistance like uh, payment of a raise or anything like that. Okay. And uh, would you be made aware of why that gap was existing? Would you get to know or did you go and inquire? Explain because the, 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 the client has gotten back to me and said nothing has started. Would you be given an explanation as to why something was not done? I might inquire and was told, yes, that um, funds were sent off, but um, in terms of further follow-up, I might not have actually followed up with the commission, or I might have followed up with the commission and told that they would get back to us to let us know, but um, further follow-up wasn't, wasn't. Okay, so generally you would not know what were the causes of the delay? Exactly. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Chairman. I just want to have, I just have one question specifically as a follow-on to Minister Husband's uh, very detailed questioning. Thank you for coming. Um, at paragraph 4.43, it says here that specifically as it relates to the financial officer of the ministry, which is the permanent secretary, it was noted that the approval of assistance required under the financial rules by the minister or the permanent secretary was not seen for specifically 36 cases. Do you have any idea how that would have been? How would there have been uh, activity undertaken for cases that had not been approved by the ministry's officials? No, ma'am, I would have no idea of that. Because normally when the cases are submitted, approval is granted and then it goes to a count section. I would have no idea how why 36 cases would not have approval and, and then already get assistance. The director would, you think? Director should be the person in charge, I think, should be in a position to I I can't say that, sir. Hmm? I can't say that. So the person in charge would not know about something like that? I... You would imagine? The person in charge would know about something like that? I don't know. can't, can't say that. All right. All right, I have just uh, one, two very simple questions. Then we'll let you go unless somebody else wants to speak. Um, you did uh, investigations, uh, assessments of people to uh, more or less um, confirm the degree of need and, and, and the type of assistance um, that was needed. Yes. Now this mentions uh, monies used to fund mortgage payments and marriage seminars. I'm sure you didn't investigate the reference, did you? Uh, in terms it's, of it's the- on page, um, where is it? I lost my page for the moment, it's on page, uh, Gone from in front of me. You are aware that that, that is contained in the report? Sorry, Reverend Adley, uh, looking for my picture. Um, your page, I think you're looking for, is page 60. Mm -hmm. Page 60. Doubtful disbursement, 4.38. I apologize you. for the lack of saying I can't move so fast <laughs> for the background. Thank you. This is 4.38. Welcome. Yes, you're right. There we were thinking that you were asleep, Dr. Brown. Mm -hmm. 
Not at all. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I, I would have done some assessments for mortgage arrears. In terms of the seminar and the shows, I would not have um, done anything on those. We all assisted with mortgage arrears. Every person that comes in gets an assessment done. So assessment is done on whatever you are requesting. That is done and sent for a decision. A decision is made whether they will assist or not but it was part of the program of the fund to provide uh, financial assistance towards mortgage arrears? Not that I can speak of, sir. Sorry? You asked if it was part of the program. It was it part of the program of the eradication fund to uh, provide people with assistance financially towards mortgage arrears? Not that I'm aware of. You never therefore recommended Pardon? You never therefore recommended that assistance, that type of assistance for anybody? I might have, but I can't recommend, but uh, the approval is, is what um, would obtain then. Uh, do you know of any cases where approval might have been given for assistance? Pardon? Do you know of any cases where financial assistance would have been given by the fund for towards mortgage arrears? Yes, I believe a, approval was granted for our mortgage arrears. I want to refer specifically to the paragraph 4.38 on page 60. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding the limitation in determining the appropriateness for disbursements from the fund, there were disbursements which seem not to readily fit the description of alleviation of poverty. These included disbursements for mortgage arrears, marriage seminar, sponsorship of shows. Criteria used to approve these disbursements was not provided. Previous coordinator of the fund was of the opinion that assistance to mortgage, mortgages was not part of the mandate of the fund. So how do you respond to that? Sir, I was only responsible for assessments, and assessments had to be done for every request that came in. So if assessment was submitted, the decision is left to persons making it, whether they approve or not. You made recommendations for assistance. But all recommendations are not always followed. Uh, accepted. You made, you made recommendations for assistance with mortgage arrears? I might have, yes. And do you know if the assistance was provided? Some. All right. Are you in a position to speak to us specifically about the circumstances, clients involved? Not necessarily right now. Um, I. If you check your notes, you'll be able to find the information as to um, persons for whom mortgage assistance would have been recommended by yourself, and those yes, I, I and those to whom the assistance would have been given. Yes, I will. if I check my notes, yes, I will. We can have access to that information now soon. Um, when I go back to the office. All right. Next week. <laughs> Next week. Mm -hmm. we'll, follow, we'll follow up with a communication to you on that matter. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Any last questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, two questions. Um, the little juvenile, who made the final decision on the approvals? Um, during which period of any period? Okay, in other words, I guess the person had the same job. Who, as in terms of job description, who made the final decision? A board, the coordinator, the minister, the permanent secretary? Well, between 2007 to 8, we had a committee. Mm -hmm. And after that, the decisions are made by the permanent secretary, deputy permanent secretary, and the minister. Okay, so I, I, I remember the discussion earlier said that there were cases that there were that were approved that then never came through the field officers. Is that correct? There were decisions made that 
um, there were approvals, approvals made because oh. uh, where was it? Go ahead. I was. I think I was asked if cases would have been done that um, we didn't know that I would not have known of that work that would have been approved. Right. Now, other, probably other officers would have done and not submitted assessments. Something to that effect. But the normal, yeah, the normal rule would be that officers will submit the assessments, then they'll go to the, 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 I call it board for approval, correct? Yes. All right. There were, were there any cases that you were unaware of or your officers, I'm not sure how many at which period, would have seen approval for, did you all ever follow up on that to see if the people, the persons were the, um, deserving of the approvals? Or it was just taken as is. Yeah. If they were deserving of the approvals. As yes, as in other words, the, I see a 36. Somebody, I think Minister Cummins mentioned it, that 36 people uh, also know that the approval of assistance by either the minister or permanent secretary was not seen for 36 cases. I'm trying to find out who would have sent in those 36 cases. Oh, that I cannot speak to. Okay. All right, and with respect to the cases that were denied, I know everybody would not be approved. In other words, people that you would have seen that in your opinion needed approval, deserved approval, what were the circumstances that they would, de would be denied? The income in the household, because uh, even though that there are the, there are some that would have come just over the poverty line, so those would especially there's income in the household, and we can we recognize that it, whatever they're requesting can be done with some of the income in the house. We would not assist them. We would just ask them to speak with the family members so that they would assist with the arrears that are outstanding. Right, but I remember I heard you say saying that not all of the the cases that you felt needed assistance were approved or did i have it wrong no not that all of the cases that would have been submitted would not be approved not that i felt they should be approved that they were not approved because they might not have been recommended or they might have been recommended and it was noticed that and it was then later denied. Hmm. Okay, I think that's it, uh, Mr. Chair. I don't see anybody else asking for the floor. So, Ms. Hannaway, we're going to thank you. And again, you, Mr. Pollard. We, Ms. Hannaway, will communicate with you directly with respect to this last matter we've been talking about where uh, requests pursuant to your assessments Mm -hmm. would be made for financial assistance towards mar mortgages, marriage seminars, shows. We're going to ask of you specific information, which you can document and just have written back to us. Uh, perhaps you may not have to come back here, but um, we need to have that document. Okay. So we'll communicate that to you directly. Yeah? Right. On. So I uh, thank you very much, Mr. Paul, for the refreshment answer. There are some refreshments downstairs, and you're invited to partake of those if you would, once you descend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Colleagues, it would seem to me that there are a number of things that we would want to be um, zero, in, zero in, in on. <laughs> As we compile uh, the report, a lot of it has to do with um, gaps and deficiencies, perhaps, in the systems, to tighten the system, particularly concerned from the time Minister Cummins first raised it um, last meeting, uh, the long period of time between requests for, for help for poor people and the system not being able to lure Minister Jordan raised again today for a decade, for, for a couple, almost a couple of decades in one, in one instance. Um, certainly a long time, 15 years is a, a long time. And um, the extent to which the eradication fund is still an active fund and needs to be resourced, et cetera, et cetera. But we will come to those matters. 
I think, based on what we heard today, and this is my view, you can tell me what you think, we need to have the, the permanent secretary in the ministry to come and perhaps mm -hmm. those who were directors of the fund up to 2016 and beyond. The two names given to us, that would be my view. And we can quickly come to closure on this particular matter with respect to urban, rural, and the poverty relation fund. Minister Husbands, do you think we, had, we should have those um, uh, two persons who served as, as heads of the agency? Yes. As well as the PS? The, and the coordinators. Yeah, well, because okay. the coordinators are part of the chain. Yeah, this, this particular coordinator distanced himself from the central uh, issue. He, he seemed to limit his activity more or less to the IC bridge aspect of the program and not other wider aspects. So, Minister Jordan, what do you think? Yeah, oh, they're not sorry. recording you because you're not being heard. No, I, I wasn't. I, I was just saying that the. I think it would be good to oh, get the information of the. Well, to hear from the permanent secretary because the. It, it seems to me that there was some discomfort mm -hmm. upon the result, the, the assuming of the office by the permanent secretary, and the discomfort seemed to have had to do with how the funds were being disbursed and the work that was being done. Mm. So from that perspective, to hear from the permanent secretary, what was it that caused uh, what to me is a pretty drastic step to say, look, let us stop this. It would be good to hear that, the, the thought process. All right, Minister Cummins, Minister Cattle, Dr. Brown, any view on this? We should have the, the two uh, directors prior to this immediate period. Um, um, come and the PS. Agreed. Agreed fully. I agree. All right. Well, that'll bring us to the end of this sitting for today. Um, we would hear a motion for uh, adjournment until next Friday. God willing. So move second. Moved and seconded. And uh, all those in favor? Please say aye. Those opposed, please say nay. Ice carried. Motions carried. We stand adjourned until next Friday, God willing. Thank you.